Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's tutorial we're going to show you a really uh, good tip uh, and quite an interesting one of how you can in essence do a VLOOKUP uh, with images. So what we're going to be looking to do is you can see in our report sheet we've got two simple um, fields here. We've got the country first and then below it we've got flags. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a drop down in the country field and then when that country is selected the flag for that country will appear in the row below. So obviously it's a really good one and it's definitely a, it definitely makes your work a lot bit more interesting um, obviously having the pictures in there and obviously it can really help to illustrate your work and obviously it works with not just flags you can do it with any kind of images so particularly useful if you're doing maybe um, an organization structure or an org chart and you want people's faces or pictures um, to be present. Um, so what we need to do is a bit of setup to do this so we'll step through it uh, and hopefully it um, sort of flows together and makes perfect sense. Uh, I might also look to put a document together to call out each of these steps but um, we'll go through it and then hopefully um, it will serve the, uh, as a really good way of you learning how to do this. So all we need to do is go into um, our second tab what we have here and so just to summarize that we've got two tabs that you're going to need to use. We're going to have a report tab and a flags tab. Uh, and the flags tab is just where we store the flags that we're going to be using. So as you can see from the information I've got here, uh, I've got a flag for each of the countries that I'm going to be interested in. Uh, so if you are to have more than this, obviously you need to add more rows. And all you just do need to do is have a Google, find the flag that you're after, and then just pop it into your Excel. And then the format that you need to have it in is you need to ensure that each of your flags are stored within their own cell. So you can just see having put borders onto my cells, you can just see the border around the outside of each flag. So you want each flag to really obviously fit within each of its own cells, uh, but you want it to try and take up as much space within that as possible. And then to the side of that, you just got the country, um, what that flag represents. So this gives us sort of um, a table, should we say, of information that we're now going to use. So first thing we can do is if you go to our report tab, country so this is a really easy drop down so all we need to do for that is go down to our or go up to our data tab and then go across to data validation uh, we're going to be using a list and then all we need to do is select from the list the source go into our flags and it's just going to be that column of England through to Germany so those five countries click OK and then we can see we've now got our drop down so we can select our country as required and obviously we can just go through those and they're working perfect so what we need to do is just go into flags and the first step we need to do is just take one of these flags. So I'll just go to the top one we've got was England, take a copy and then just go into this other sheet and paste. And I'm just going to take that flag and just center it uh, in the center of the cell below. So obviously at the moment we've got a flag there but um, obviously it goes without saying that if I was to select this drop down nothing's going to happen because we've not tied the two together. What we do have um, is when we click on the cell we are actually able to enter uh, a reference in the formulas bar as you can see I'm doing here and doing the equal sign but we're not able to do a, a VLOOKUP or any kind of formula or function within this all we can do is reference uh, a named range so this is what we're going to be using to enable us to reference um, the country to find out what flag should go with that country so I'll just come out of there so the first thing we're then going to, well not the first thing, we've already done the first thing, I'm moving the flag, but the next thing we're going to do is we'll go back to our flag sheet. So we've got them all in the format that we require. And what we're going to do is just highlight all of this information, so uh, both columns, so you can see like that. And then we're going to go up to our formula sheet. And what we're going to do is you'll have this section here and you have maybe like a name manager, but you can see it's defined name here for me. And all we're going to do is go create from selection. And what this will do is it will use a selection we've made and it will make a named reference for each one of our flags and um, the names for the countries. So create names in. So all we need to do this without diving in and causing any confusion is re remove the top row selection. And what we want to do is have this uh, right column selected. So what it's going to do is it's going to use the right column or column B for us as the name for the country. So this is what the, the cell reference will be named. And then it will then pick up the what's in column A. So use that as a cell reference. So all we need to do then is go click OK. 
And if we were to then go into the define name or name manager, as might be for you, you can see that each of those is now being uh, created for us. So if we go into England, you can see that our reference for England is flags A3, so that's correct. If we were to go into the US, A4, and then even if we were to go into Germany, you can see it's referencing A7. So it's referencing all the cells that we require it to be referenced. So if we now go to uh, close that, if we go back to our report, and we'll go back to here, so we can see we've got our England flag currently in there, although our country selected is USA. Because we've now got a, name, um, a named range for each of our flags, what we can do is if I was to click our current England flag, go into our formula bar, and this time enter, do an equal sign, and then type USA, because we've got a named range called the USA, and then hit enter you can see that our flag has now updated to the USA. So it's, it's pulled up into, as pulled as we required. If I was then to change this to maybe Germany, you can see that again, it's now pulled the German flag. So everything is um, connected as we desire. All we now need to do is connect the dots to then say, okay, well, we want it to be looking at this cell, uh, the dropdown, to tell us what flag should be populated. So in order to do that, because again, we can't do any formalism in here, we need to create another name range, um, what's going to be using indirect. So if you're not familiar with indirect, I have done a video on it before, so the link to that video should be on the screen. But in essence, indirect just allows you to create a, a reference from an input that you give. Uh, but like I said, if, you haven't, if you're not familiar with indirect, then check out that video, else um, this video will help you need or know what you need to know about indirect to make this work. So what we're now going to do is go back to flags and we don't need to, well, we can stay in the re report sheet actually, that'd probably be more helpful. So it's going to go back into our name manager or define name again one more time. And this time we're going to create a, a new, um, new range. And this one we're going to call is flag. So you, we're going to call it flag. And then the formula for this is going to be equals indirect. And simply just reference where our drop down is. So for us, it's in the report uh, sheet and it's uh, cell C2, close brackets. So all it's going to do is it will take the value what's in here. It will then use indirect to then convert it to a, a name reference. And it will then obviously just reference that will even pick up the value in this flag name. When I then go OK. What we can then do is then lastly, we'll come back to our flag we've entered in here, what currently says uh, equals Germany. We'll change this now to flag, hit enter, and you can see it's updated to the USA. If we now to go back to our country drop down and select another country, you can see that our, our flag is now updating based on whatever country we populate. And then what we can do just to tidy things up is just move and create the size of our flag like that. We can obviously check it's still working fine. Put Spain in there, perfect. And then what we might want to just literally do is go into drawing. No, it's not into drawing. Where is it gone? Picture format, that's what I'm looking for, picture format. And then we can go into crop. And then what crop will allow us to do is, hopefully we should be able to use it just to crop out some of the border we have on our flag. Cool, and then has that tidied up a bit? If I now select another one, Germany. Yeah, so you can see that, you might remember or notice that fuzzy little border we had around the outside. We just now got rid of that by doing a crop. We can now make our flag a bit bigger, center it in the middle of our cell, and then perfect. So then as we now change any flag that we have, you can see that it updates for us as well. The uh, top one to note actually with this is for like the USA as a prime example, when you're doing the name ranges, you just need to be careful that if you were to put, um, so for USA, so we use USA because obviously it's an easier name to reference. If we were to put the United States, what would happen is when you create that name range, um, it would actually put an underscore 
in any spaces you have in your words. So actually the name range created for the United States would be United underscore States. So unless you updated that into your column B, um, so it had that same name, that's where you'd have a disconnect and it wouldn't not act when you selected the United States from your drop down, it wouldn't make a complete match because it'd be looking for United Space States rather than United underscore states. So hopefully not to cause confusion there, but in essence the key message there was just try and keep it to a single uh, word uh, with your countries uh, where possible. It just will help and uh, save you any confusion at all. But there you go, that is how the end result is. Um, what we just now done here, we just now lost our flag. Oh, nope, that was gone. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that video and it gave you some good insight to a new feature you can use to incorporate into your report just to give it a, a bit more flair and give it make it a bit more interesting maybe for the uh, recipients using it. Obviously, it makes it look a lot more professional and obviously a lot more technical when you incorporate this. And hopefully, once you get grasp of it, you'll find it's actually quite a simple function to start incorporating into your work. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all the future videos videos that we bring out. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. Uh, it's greatly appreciated by us and it does really help out the channel. Uh, thank you very much for watching and we shall see you in the next video.